Welcome back, trainers. I am here with the lovely Mike Ellis. My name's Amy Wosley, and we are here in Malmo, Sweden, for the Pokemon Trading Card Game Regionals, the final regional event of the season. How exciting is that? We're boogieing into the final stand. Yeah, everyone right now is fighting for those CP to try and get their world's invite or play for that stipend for the top 22. So all to play for right here. And we're seeing a lot of familiar faces in that day two. Only 52 players made it, but we're well and truly through it with round 13 coming up shortly. Yeah, the stakes are high. Everyone is still in this. We've got so much to play for. We've got points on the line, Stefan's on the line. We've got little events all over the countries now, ready for locals. So someone could get either their invite today or so so close. There's a lot of people coming along to this event going, I need X amount of CP <laughs> to get my world's invite. And lots of them have been getting top 128, top 64, satisfied by that. But it's now we're looking at those players who are looking for top cut to make it into that top eight. And due to the, the 52 players and the uh, the lack of uh, XO players, you know, round seven, we didn't have a single player on seven and oh, zero. it's very so unusual. It's quite close up the top there. And a lot of these players will be looking to just get that edge in these final few rounds. They will. And like I just said, it's really unusual not to have anybody kind of flying away with the competition. I think it shows a really lovely balance of meta and a really strong position of players. We clearly have some of the best of the best here at this event this weekend. Yeah, I think that what you said there about the meta, there is every deck here has a deck it doesn't want to play against. Yeah, yeah. It will be able to beat it, but it has to go in its favor. It has to be a bit luckier. And yeah. so that's really good because it means that every player has to be playing there optimally and uh, they can't get away with making mistakes. And so it really brings out the best players. And that's why we saw at EUIC mm -hmm. so of the best players making that top eight so uh, we're excited to see what will be coming in uh, in this next match oh indeed and we've even got some live standings to, to see show where people you are. guys so oh. we can have a proper look whoa Go on, brennan <laughs> Go on. my word like we said nobody's on a clear absolute winning streak yet the day is still young there is still time but as you can see everything is rather well split so there's still everything to play for every Every game and every match matters. Yeah, you can see there Carl Blake we just had on stream 8-1-3 sneaking into that top eight thanks to that win. So we'll need to continue winning to stay just inside top eight. But I think Brennan's in a really good spot now where they're most likely going to be making that top eight. Not many people can catch up to them um, just with these three rounds left, round 13, 14 and yeah. 15. They are pretty much secured for top eight there with that 10-1-1. What an impressive score. Just looking uh, down the names there. I see my boy Kai. So many memorable. Uh, Milos, he's um, shown very streng strong standings in a lot of recent events. We've got Ross up in there as well in eighth place. So, yeah, these guys are all just fighting tooth and nail for these placements to get into top eight now yeah Luke, lucas in second there i think Oof. he's he's been a player for a long few years now um always been there or thereabouts uh and i think this this is what we're seeing now is those regular day two players coming through sprinkled in with some newer players yeah. so uh, let's have a look and see what's going to be happening here in round 13 as the players are set up just getting that coin flip down and we can see they're straight away looking to get into this game. Um, I'm, I'm excited to see how these two play out and the decks they're playing are definitely interesting. Once again, we are bringing you some of the hottest coverage as we see another deck, which is different from any we have seen before at this event on stream. We're having a little look at Fusion Mu VMAX against Lost Zone Box. It is the turbo build again, but this will be a really interesting matchup to see if Fusion can sparkle their way to a victory. Yeah, Lost Zone Box, uh, very popular right now. Many different flavors of it. The Turbo Build, I think, is the most successful on stream so far. Mm. Um, but there is uh, that element of pop-off with it that it needs to <laughs> yeah. hit to really start showing how amazing it is. Fusion Mew, however, the other side, the less popular of the Mew VMAX builds yeah. right now, uh, mainly because it's got a little bit more uh, going on in the deck, so there's less of a streamlined game plan. There is a little bit of a part of the peak judge package in there, a little bit of an early pressure package with the Meloetta. Uh, but let's have a look at the achievements here for our uh, left player there, Oliver. Oliver has uh, clearly been on a hot streak recently with Liverpool going top 62. And then the special event recently at Utrecht coming eighth place. What an achievement. You can't bat an eyelid at that. And clearly they're going to do very well today as well to 
add to the board of accolades. Yeah, we're seeing a huge increase in player base uh, in the last year or so. And a lot of that means we, we're getting new players coming in with more experience, more to play for, more commitment to the events, going to yeah. multiple regionals. We're starting to see uh, lots of players on stream with multiple achievements only within the last year or so. Uh, and on the other side, the Fusion Stripe Mew player, Lassa, uh, with Leipzig, top 31, EUIC this year. Um, I mean, 158 at the one of the, the, the biggest event we've had yeah. um, so far. So it looks like both players could be going for their hottest run yet. 100%. How exciting is that? Yeah, I mean, all of these players are incredibly experienced. We've mentioned before about locals coming back. Mm -hmm. Many of these players we're seeing making day twos now are the best player from their local or yeah. the, the regular top finisher at their local events. And it's only now that they start to build up that stamina for a 15 round Swiss at a regional where it becomes oh, yeah. a lot more challenging for, for players to keep making. It's not just about playing the deck right. It's about knowing your body as well and knowing what you can handle and making sure that you're healthy and ready for these events. It's a really harsh event, especially for those who have traveled a long way. Oh, yeah. Some of the travel fatigue stories, you know, hearing people traveling for 10 hours driving to the event uh, just to try and make sure they can turn up to the next regional. Uh, but I'm sure both of these will be thinking it was worth it as they are here looking very strong uh, on table two. Uh, looking to start here with the prizes, as you can see. Nothing too crazy on either side. Maybe that uh, judge could be relevant for Lassa as he's only playing two. Um, but other than that, a bit of energy could be interesting. Um, the Fusion Strike energy is always a bit scary for a Fusion Strike Mew player, with the main bulk of their attacks being because of the facilitation of those Fusion Strike energy, and especially for the early game pressure that Meloetta provides. Yeah, you, you, go, for that, you go for that Alyssa Sparkle and uh, don't find all the energy there. Right, game one, here we go as the players begin uh, revealing a Confe and a Mew, the optimal start for both players, as we see the V-Star marker there. Uh, Sometimes I wonder when uh, when you see these d turbo players and they pop that V-Star marker down and they're very aware of it, whether well, that's sort of revealing, maybe I've got a forest seal stone, but I'm sure at this stage both these players are aware of vaguely what their opponent's deck is, asking a few friends what they're playing up against. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me. If people doing their research going into day two, making sure they're up with their friends, testing through the night, making sure they get enough sleep, but they also had a little look at what their potential matchups could be going into day two. We saw at the start there, the a very friendly fist bump. It's great to see when players are clearly on good terms going into this battle. And we start with the Deoxys. Yeah, the Deoxys, a great attacker into the Lost Box. 120 hit points out of range of a Cramorant. Uh, does do 160 damage with a Fusion Strike energy attached. So can uh, be a good trader into the early game attackers of a Lost, lost Zone Box. Yeah, it's not a, not a card that we see very often in Fusion Strike Mew. It's not one that we've seen very often at all. A lot of players prefer to have the second Meloetta, but I think the Deoxys gives a certain amount of versatility to the deck that we have yet to kind of experience, and especially where this is a bit of a mix of Fusion Strike and Double Turbo Energy, the Deoxys has a little bit more flexibility in that as a single prize attacker. Yeah, and we see there the Chromatic into that Lost Vacuum. Um, we'll see whether this finds anything. Uh, and it looks like that chromatic does work. Just a little shuffle there from Oliver chuckling away as he does get to go in and search for exactly what he needs. Ooh. And at this stage, Battle VIP Pass, a great early game search card, uh, either with a Forest Seal Stone or with that Kramomatic getting set up, getting nice and wide with that Mew. And this is the hardest bit for Fusion Mew versus oh, yeah. the Double Turbo Energy Mew. Setting up is a, typically a little bit more challenging. It is, that's the beauty of the Double Turbo, right? Is that people like it because it is more consistent with that setup and it gets it more often and it hits those beats it needs to hit. Whereas with the Fusion Strike, variant yes it can pop off if you're going second you can quite often donk your opponent you can say oh you've only got one basic oh isn't that funny ha <laughs> ha here's a meloetta. <laughs> meloetta there yeah uh which i think is its strongest advantage in a best of three format that's one of the reasons i think the fusion strike mew arguably could be stronger going into best of three you never know when you can get those cheeky wins just from knocking out the only pokemon on the opponent's board yeah we've seen fusion mew do quite well out um in japan with the the best of one format because it gives you a game plan no matter which you, you flip, a heads or a tails on the on the coin flip, go first or second. So it does have that versatility going first and second. 
Uh, there's not many decks right now in the format that can uh, hit that high early on. You know, Maridon yeah. might yeah. not be the most popular deck right now, but it is its one asset that makes it so good as going yeah. second. You can knock out first turn. Uh, and there's a few other lists. I mean, Cramorant uh, 110 is, is scary enough in its own right. So to be able to hit for 210 going second is scary. Right, exactly. So this is one of the few decks in format that I think a lot of people forget about, but also that can really put the pressure on and take the lead and command a game's pace very early on. So we just see that, that Genesect going into a hand of unplayables. I did see a judge in there. I saw a double turbo energy, so that Deoxys will be able to attack next turn. Uh, I think right now that, that uh, Chorus Experiment to kick things off for Oliver will be a great start to be able to allow him to hit four in the Lost Zone and get some Cramorant damage down. Yeah, it's always perfect when you get that first Cold Res experiment going, or even on turn one, the Lost Zone can begin to be populated by less less preferable cards at this stage. Oh, wow. Uh, interestingly, going for the Battle VIP pass in the Lost Zone, that is maybe an indication to Lasse of what Oliver has next. Yeah, I assume there's going to be another VIP pass in there. Yeah, there and it is. There it is. I, I mean, there is a case here, and this is one of Turbo uh, Lost Box's abilities, is to get a Dragonite down, get that um, five in the Lost Zone through Confei and Chorus Experiment, and then be able to get it up to seven with a Forest Seal Stone and Lost Vacuum. And then you can even Mirage Gate onto a Dragonite at that point. So there is a world where uh, we spoke about decks that can hit hard early on. This is also a deck that, if it really does high roll, can get into a Dragonite attack. Turbo has the nickname for a reason. It can absolutely fly off the, off the starting line, right? Yeah, the, the things in this deck that make it Turbo, we've got four Trekking Shoes, three Forest Seal Stone, three Lost Vacuum. My word. All of those in there, along with all the typical switch outs and ball search to try and get through the Confei. And then the Stadium of Choice is also contributing towards that Turbo. The Poker Stop can just help find those cards like Lost Vacuum to, to help speed up the process. Yeah, a really heavy item card deck relying less on supporters means Poker Stop is even more powerful. Powerful. You're more likely to draw into an item card, allowing you to put it into your hand. Pokestop lets you take three cards from the top of the deck. If any of them are item cards, they go to hand and the rest go to your discard pile, sadly. So we'll see if that, that reach for the Dragonite is the game plan here for Oliver. Um, recognizing that, that I think there was a, a Confei in hand as well and lots of switch out. So we'll get to that five through the Confei and the Chorus Experiments. It's now just about that final two that comes from the Lost Vacuum plus Forest Sealstone typically. Yeah, we'll see if they can just put all of that early game pressure on and say, you know what, Fusion Mew? I'm not that worried. I can do it too. So there is only one lightning left in the deck because there is uh, two in, in the deck. There is one in the discard now. An energy recycler is in hand, so that is a possibility. Um, just the escape rope there gets another Mew up, so nothing too much to worry about. Um, as we see the next flash lightning. If a lightning comes out with this, then it could be concerning. It could, but so far, not much energy has been in those flower selecting. I think there was one psychic near the beginning. But other than that, they've had some not too difficult decisions. Another switch cart allows them to go in again. We're really going for it. Oh, battle VIP. So the VIP Ooh, will allow to get more basics more. out. Here we go. So I don't know if there is a forest seal stone there available, but if there is, then this will be a potential first turn donk. I think it's going to go down the Cramorant route. Uh, because I think the Forest Seal Stone has eluded Oliver. Otherwise, there could have been a Trachonite attack here if there was a Mirage Gate in hand too. There really could have been, and taking out a Mu V this early would be absolutely bonkers. It also restricts Lassie's ability to Psychic Leap, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, Dragonite being uh, a big Pokemon to knock out, 230 hit points is, is out of range of a lot of attacks. You know, there is the, um, the power tablet, so there's always the ability to get up to it, but forcing a Dragonite knockout that early on could be deadly. It really could, so we'll see how we go. They are going to go ahead and put the other Mew. Lassie is switching between those, considering that their Genesects are the more important piece of the puzzle here for their sheer card draw and consistency of their deck. So with Turbo Lost Box, we know at some point the Drapion's going to come down. Oh, yeah. And that's going to swing the turn, and that's going to be the, the big turn for them. But they don't want to do that early on. You don't want to do that on a basic V and only get two prizes off of it. Uh, it needs to be done off of the uh, V Max. So putting some damage on a Mew mm -hmm. could potentially set up for a, uh, a knockout with, a, say, a Dragonite or a Raikou. And then the last knockout would be through the Drapion. So 
um, that Deoxys is going to be key in this matchup to avoid VMAXs getting knocked out. It is, and yeah, getting some early damage on the board there, just going with the Cramorant, Spit innocently. Five in the Lost Zone, still a really good start for Turbo, so they're probably not that worried right now. They filled their bench to prevent anything uh, going on, just checking there's no Echoing Horn madness going on, but at the moment they look pretty safe from that. It's also keeping only single prizes in play at this stage can be good because it means that uh, you're setting up that slower pace, forcing more knockouts from the Mew. Um, it's also going to force resources for that Deoxys, having to put energies down for it. Uh, so you're asking a bit more of Mew throughout the coming turns. But for now, Mew is, is ready to get going with their game plan. They went first. They're probably expecting a Cramorant attack back. So if, if that's part of their game plan, then uh, everything's going as planned for the Fusion Mew. Yeah, remembering that Cramorant can't knock out Deoxys with a whopping 130 HP for a basic. That's nothing to shy away from. Deoxys is indeed one of the most interesting additions that I've ever seen to a Fusion Mew, but it looks like it's going to put in some work here. So next turn, Oliver might be able to get the Sableye on board, and that would be able to knock out the Deoxys, getting 120 damage directly on it. Ooh. And that would allow for the 1-2-3 prize uh, journey. Um, so there's, there's that to think about. There's also uh, the Drapion that's always going to be, you know, maybe it's in the prizes, maybe it's not in the prizes. So there's all sorts of decisions um, for Oliver to have to play around. Uh, the Mu VMAX, but for now, we do see the damaged Mu getting evolved into Mu VMAX. Uh, I think that's smart to do because that can be psychic leaped in the future. Yeah. So we'll see what happens here. So that knockout in the Dox is doing exactly what it's designed to do attack into the single prize Pokemon and be hard to knock out back. Yeah, I think that's something that Mew has always struggled with, right, against Lost Zone Box decks, is that they can act almost entirely single prize if they'd like to. Mm -hmm. He was about to use the lightning energy there for the. Um, discard, which would have meant there would have been both lightning and the discard pass. So instead goes to the water energy. Uh, energy recycler and a Colrus off of that flower selecting. I think there was a Colrus in hand from last turn. So they should be okay to go ahead and discard that one into the lost zone, presumably. Mm. But it does limit their card draw because they do run very limited supporters. Is that a Colrus in the hand there right at the back? I think it was. If not, we might see the Colrus taken here, but the recycler might be required later on. Yeah, they decide to take the Recycler and leave the Colres on this occasion. I think there's also a Recycler in hand, so it was one of those where you get either a Recycler and uh, two Recyclers or two Colres in the hand. Yeah. So we'll see what happens here as the next flower selection. That's a nice simple one there. Ooh. And Pokestop going to go down. Pokestop. We haven't seen a Pokestop used a lot, and it's not used in every deck. And uh, sadly, Dragonite goes to the discard pile there, revealing to Lasse that they are indeed playing Turbo Box. Yeah, so the Dragonite going into discard. We, we know there's going to be a Clara available later on, uh, but it does just add another step to get that Dragonite attack off as we see the Heavy Ball's not going to find a Pokemon here, but does make price checking a little bit easier, just confirming the earlier suspicions of Oliver. It can be really difficult with Lost Zone Box to analyze your prize cards, so being able to just use Heavy Ball to be able to see them no matter what is kind of huge. So that was the that was where that energy recycler was. It was in the prizes, ah, not in his hand. It's in prize. Yes, there, there it, it is. is. There it is. So if he put that energy recycler into the lost zone in that recycler versus Colorus decision, oh, that would have meant bad. no recycler access. And especially with the only lightning being in discard or hand, Mirage Gate would have been not so good there for Raikou or mm. Dragonite. So we, we see. I'm, I'm wondering what the game plan here is. Try and get that Mew V Max. Do you reckon? I don't know. That was just. That was just a skate rope, so Lasse decided to put that forward. That was given to Oliver, so I'm not sure whether that is the game plan right now. It looks like they're going to go for a Moonlight Shuriken, but I'm not entirely sure what their, what their targets might be. Maybe they're going to go for the Genesect route. Yeah, I guess they could go try and knock two Genesects out. They could also try and get it on the other Mew, so that if either of the Mews evolve into Mew VMAX, they have damage on them. Mm. Maybe get it on the Deoxys to try and start sprinkling damage down to, to knock out Deoxys and Genesect next turn through Sableye. Yeah, maybe. The Genesects do tend to be like sitting ducklets, don't they? Just on the bench, not able to do much. And in most Fusion Mew lists, we don't see any sort of recovery. But a lot of the double turbo energy builds are now running Penny for that reason, right? Yeah. Well, doing the maths, if there's anything on the Genesect, and uh, the Deoxys, it won't be able to knock out two Pokemon. But if it goes for the Mew mm. and the Deoxys, that would be enough to then get both of them with the Sableye because they Ooh. have a total of 300 between them. 90 on Scary. each would leave 120. So 
Uh, be interested to see the route Oliver takes here. We love a bit of clever lost zone mathematics. Yeah. I tell you what, Pokemon has inspired me to be a much better mathematician. I'm quite poor at mathematics, but when it comes to Pokemon, I seem to manage. So, okay. you know, it's one of those strange things that I have got better at. It's through practice of uh, just using decks like Lost Zone Box and getting better at them slowly. Yeah, we saw it on stream earlier. Carl had to like triple check his maths there and speak to him in the interview. He said, you think after all this time, Time, you'll be able to work it out straight away, but it does when oh your no, brain starts to, um, to wear down after long days of playing, it can be quite hard to do that maths. As we see the uh, Moonlight Shuriken on a Genesect and a Deoxys, that means um, there's 100 left on the Genesect and 30 left on the Deoxys, just out of range of a Sableye. Sprinkle the two of them. But trying to go for the Pokemon that can't remove themselves from play like Muse can. So I suppose Oliver's trying to go for the more reliable method of knocking Pokemon out rather than going for the risky play of potentially allowing a Mew to psychic leap itself back into the deck. 100%. I it's really interesting because this is a newer matchup for a lot of people. They haven't played Fusion Mew in a while. Yeah. So knowing where to put the damage, it, it might take a little bit of thinking. Um, you mentioned about the Mew, but if the Mew were to evolve, for example, there'll be no uh, Mew to copy the Psychic Leap. So there's, there's all sorts of angles to start thinking ahead. And that Deoxys being 120 hit points, you can see why it's in there for this matchup, because oh, yeah. it is hard to knock out. It is difficult to knock out. You've either got to put all of your eggs in one basket with Sableye and to knock out a single prize Pokemon, which isn't ideal, or you've got to use something even bigger, which is crazy, right? But you can't take it out with a Cramorant. You can't take it out with um, a Greninja on their own. And so Sableye early on. It. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's a good early game attacker. Damage. It does seem really strong, and I think that's probably why it's included rather than a second Meloetta, which sits at, is it 90 HP, so in range of a Greninja? Yeah, I mean, Meloetta is very vulnerable in this matchup. Yeah, 90 HP, exactly. Really scary. So, really, <laughs> I think it's quite a clever play to include the Deoxys, and that's probably why they've gone for it earlier on rather than digging for a Meloetta at this stage. Yeah, and in some matchups as well, you won't be able to get a Max Miracle set up because you'll only have one Mew Max in play like this. Yeah. So if you haven't got the fusion energy on that Mew Max to do the Max Miracle, you can copy uh, the Deoxys attack photon boost uh, to try and keep that Mew in the active spot, yeah. not having to recover from a Techno Blast. Yeah, absolutely. That's a really great point that you can still utilize that Photon Boost attack. It does 80 damage. Uh, plus, if there's any Fusion Strike energy attached, it'll do another 80. But in this matchup, even the initial 80 is enough yeah. for some Pokemon. That's enough for a Sableye and any of the Comfey. Yep, and there is two Choice Belt in this deck, no uh, Cleansing Gloves. Just sort of working you guys through the list. There is a Lost City in there, which I think could be relevant for the Drapion. Um, but yeah, this whole deck is, is kind of a mishmash of Fusion and uh, the Disruption Double Turbo Energy Mew. So uh, we'll see both routes possible in different matchups, but then we, we often see with decks where they try and do two different game plans, yeah. it can often affect their consistency. So we'll see how that affects Lassie in this uh, best of three. It can get messy, that's the thing. It can just end up a bit more of a bundle of confusion rather than a very clear and linear deck and plan, which we've known Mew to be so good at in the past. Yeah, Mew's known to be the most consistent deck in the format right now yeah. with all that draw. But if you add in a few other attackers, it can get a little bit more complicated. There's a lot of damage on board right now uh, on Lass's side. You can see nine on Deoxys, nine on Genesect, and 11 on the Mew V Max. Uh, and it will be copying that Psychic Leap to send it back into the deck. That's going to heal some of the damage on the board. Yeah. Uh, and now there is going to be a question of uh, what do you target? If you target the Mew, there will be no Mew VMAX next turn. If you target that Deoxys, it takes away their scariest attacker. Maybe Sableye just to set up some Sprinkle to stay out of Roxanne range. Yeah, it's a really curious situation that Lasse has put themselves in with only one Mew on the bench. So if you evolve that next turn, it won't have the ability to use any of another Mew's attacks unless they can dig for another one, which admittedly is one of Mew's specialities. So dig, it is dig. very possible that they can dig to all through their entire deck, in fact. And we see the beginning of the race of the trekking shoes from Oliver's side, allowing them to look at the top card of their deck. If they'd like to take it to hand, they may. If not, they can discard it and pick the next one instead. So we see a Chorus experiment going into the Lost Zone there off of that flower selecting, needing that Clara as the other one's in the prizes. So anything in the discard pile right now, including that Dragonite V, must be returned through a Clara. And we'll see that Clara be played here, I think. Yes. 
Yeah, Clara's going to go ahead and grab that Sableye and two energy back. And of course, the Dragonite, which I forgot about, which uh, was uh, discarded, unfortunately, by Pokestop earlier in the game. But that's why Pokestop isn't too damaging in this deck. They've got really great energy recycle and a bit of Pokemon recursion through Clara as well. So we see those Lightning Energy. This is key now for the Dragonite. If you want the Dragonite to attack, you have a Lightning Energy in play on a Confei, a Lightning Energy in hand, no access to Energy Recycler. So the Lightning Energy cannot be uh, got through the deck through a Mirage Gate. Um, and so you see the Drapion now being put into the, into the discard uh, through that poker stop and that the Clara. That is not what we want to see. Clara and the prizes needs to be taken now to get that Drapion back, so oh this could have affected no. Oliver. That could really spell disaster. Oh, they, they're saying no more. No more to that poker stop. Put it in the lost zone. It's betrayed me. Off it goes. We're going to vacuum it up. <laughs> Using the gone. Dragonite as well. So <laughs> uh, going down a more Sableye route, so this is more of a um, Sablezard style yeah. of approach to take down a, a Mew deck, is to really target those Genesect and focus on those, but Oliver needs the Clara to get that big knockout with a Drapion. Yeah. Otherwise, it's gonna have to go through three of those Genesects, which would be tough. I imagine, I can imagine what's going through Oliver's head. They're thinking, right, I can still do this. This is still my game. I've got this. If I Sableye and knock out some Pokemon, I can take some prize cards. Clara's in there somewhere. She'll help me get out of this mess. Well, hopefully for Oliver, they'll be able to find her, but I'm not too sure. Yeah, and uh, of the Greninja getting more damage in play with 1990 over the 120. So getting that first Genesect there, um, and an important time to do it as well when there's the least amount of fusion Pokemon in play, yeah. reduce the draw outs after that psychic leap. Um, but that will be two prizes taken, no Clara found, so Oliver has to think of a new strategy. Yeah, they can still start sprinkling damage with Sableye. They're going for the next Genesect. Their prize map is unusual at this point i'd say they've got damage on a single prizer and then another dual prizer that's still only three and they're going to need four to get that full effect of the knockouts they can't claris they can't drapian it's a really sticky situation and that judge off the prizes from last turn so Lassa using both of the judges in this game um, so this is paid out very differently to typical especially with the drapion being discarded and no access to clara until that penultimate prize, maybe the last prize in the, in the prize cards there. So Oliver yeah. is, is looking to, to find a way through um, all the Genesect. I reckon a Greninja next turn, that would put what the Genesect down to 110, the other one down to 100. It's still a lot of turns left. There are a lot of turns left. This looks like it could be a real race to see if we can get through three games, or is it going to be a 1-0? Lost Box can be really dangerous when it's played as a single prize deck for that reason. Yeah, and I guess the Raikou could get the final attack on a Genesect if that was needed. Um, so yeah, there's some stuff to think about here. I guess you could uh, even sprinkle a 90 on a Mew that would evolve into a Mew VMAX yeah. and then be able to knock that out with a Raikou. So yeah, very unorthodox route to victory here. I think it could work though. I'm, I'm seeing the positives. I don't think it's entirely necessary as long as the energy is handled very delicately. I can see a win still coming out in Oliver's favor. And the Lost City there, meaning that Sableye will go to the Lost Zone and the energy discarded. So that's one of the two Sableye now in the Lost Zone. The other one on the bench there waiting to, to be used. Mm. And so Greninja will be using concealed cards uh, to start drawing through that deck. See if we can finish off the deck and really know exactly what's in there. A classic benefit of the Lost Engine is being able to motor through the deck to the point where you can then just put energy back in with Energy Recycler and know exactly what's in there. Yeah, do you think the Lost City play was a bit risky for Lasse? I know that you've got to make sure that you're not adding to your opponent's Lost Zone too early in the game. However, if Oliver was able to recur the Drapion multiple times at this point, they also have time now to remove the Lost City. Usually, we'd see the Lost City play on the turn the Drapion has managed to attack. Yeah, I think it's, it's unusual because he sees it in the discard pile. He knows it's there. He's seen a Clara be played, but he doesn't know if the other Clara is available or if there's three Clara being right? played. A lot of decks are playing three Clara nowadays. Yeah, so he's kind of banking on the idea that Drapion in the discard is too hard to get hold of. Leaving this Lost City in play is a good idea right now. And you can see how thin that deck is. Four energy being put back in. It looks about like eight cards, maybe up to 10 cards there. Yeah. So not much left for Oliver there. Gone through his whole deck. Uh, unfortunately, going through that whole deck has led to him losing some important resources. Going for the Mirage Gate there for one on Sableye and then getting ready to set up Greninja again. So I think you're right. It looks like we're going to be sprinkling some damage, then going over the Greninja and trying to get those prize cards in. An unorthodox, but a way that works. It's not going bad. I wonder if right now Oliver's hoping to knock out 
the Deoxys to get the Clara. Again, like, Ooh, I wonder yeah, if every like, single... Because you can't play around prizes like that, but no. that might be his only route to victory here. It might be. So I think, yeah, that's what they're doing. They're going to go, oh, the rest on Genesect, but knocking out the Deoxys, taking one prize card, and it was the shoes. The it shoes. was the shoes. <laughs> shoes. Four stompers in the, in the deck, four trekking shoes. We're seeing a lot more trekking shoes this event than we ever have before. We are. It really makes the deck almost like it's four cards shorter because you're constantly churning through a little bit more. It does nothing more than thin your deck, and that's perfect for a deck like this. Yeah, it adds, adds another uh, gear to the turbo of the Turbo Lost Zone box here, really motoring through to try and get that Lost Zone as high as possible. Um, typically... The faster you get your Lost Zone up, the better you are against other Lost Zone decks. Yeah. But we've also seen how effective it can be at getting early donks with the Dragon Knight, uh, guaranteeing that early Cramorant attack, and also just setting up Mirage Gates nice and soon for the Greninja to allow it to take out multiple small Pokemon on the bench in like Guardi or other Lost Boxes. Indeed, yeah, it's really powerful the way that you can manufacture your deck to work with, the, with all of the attacks and mechanics, making sure that everything is working like absolute clockwork. Okay, so the Alyssa Sparkle now. We've seen two in play and one's in the prizes, so I think there's only going to be one here in the deck, I believe. I've just thought of a rather snazzy occurrence. Oh, is that the Max Miracle? on a Mew Max. Not quite. Go on. Uh, Sableye can't attack a Genesect with a Fusion Strike energy on it. That is very true. I hadn't thought about Fusion Strike energy in that sense, so you could even have put it on the Genesect yeah. to protect it from that. Then um, a Genesect can't get Sableye because Fusion Strike energy is, prevents the effects of attacks. Yeah, I mean, it, it's not going to be relevant in this situation because of the Greninja, right? Yeah, because of the Greninja, it should be It's not sadly relevant right this moment. But they could have prevented it earlier in the game. So we'll oh, see. Oh, is it abilities, not effects of attacks? Oh, so it isn't quite. So it can still attack through. Oh, that's a shame. I was thinking I couldn't remember which way round it was. Yeah, you, you read the card there. Um, so... We've read the card here. Fusion energy for all you at home. It's just effects of attacks. Ah, so it, yeah. But yeah, we'll 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 uh, we'll see what's the, what the game plan here is for Oliver. Like Oliver is looking to um, work his way around those Genesect to try and take the final few prize cards. Um, needing three prize cards here, so the Drapion would be ideal. Yeah. We know it's not accessible right no, now. Not this second. Lassa doesn't know that, so he might look to do stuff like psychic leaps or something. But actually. Very cleverly, attaching two fusion energy to that Mew can psychic leap as the baby Mew uh, with a power tablet uh, uh, and doesn't need to evolve it right here. So keeping those uh, two prizes in play, playing around a Drapion. It's really clever. This, this whole game is very back and, back and forth and it's a very unorthodox way. There's abilities, of right? Yeah, it's abilities. Yes, yeah, so my bad. Yeah, I thought it was uh, effects of attacks, but it's abilities. Um, so things like Klefki, I'd imagine. Yeah, Klefki. Yeah. So Klefki can't affect it. But yeah, we're, we're all learning here today. I hope you guys are learning too. <laughs> I haven't played Fusion Mew in such a long time. We haven't seen Fusion Energy in a while. Um, I used to play uh, Salazzle Butterfree back oh, when Mew VMAX first I came out. I loved that. Uh, every deck it could be except for the Fusion Energy on Mew would completely ruin the game plan. So I, oh. I, I have experienced that blocking effect from the, the Fusion Energy before. So um, you can see there, Confei being put into the active, looking to... Uh, get that Mew on board, trying to do the Psychic Leap again. Gets a bit, needs to get a damage modifier here, so needs to get another power tablet if possible, but not much they draw do. support. No, and they've used a lot of their power tablets already. A lot of them have already, we've seen in the discard pile, and they're really limited due to the lack of Fusion Strike Pokemon on their field right now, which is really unusual for Mew, right? Is also, just look at the, the Sableyes, both of them going into the Lost Zone, Dragonite in the Lost Zone, dropping in the discard pile. Oh, no, what can either player do? But then the Clara has been collected by Oliver with that, um, that last yeah. knockout, so just hoping to get that on board next turn. Needs to be some, there's no judge available for Lassa, but there is the, the Roxanne maybe. Maybe. There was so few Pokemon in play, it's really hard to find the exact thing you need at the right moment. This is honestly tooth and nail. Either player could have this. Managing to get that Clara could be the pivotal point of this game though. Yeah, so 100, uh, was it 100 Sprinkle yeah. onto a Genesect earlier with a, with a Sableye set up for that Greninja 
play. So very yeah. smart play from from Oliver. Um, you know, this is why this matchup's so hard for Fusion Mew, just because the drafting hasn't even been used here, mm -hmm. and uh, and it's, it's still, still been struggling. still been struggling. Yeah, the struggle bus is real. Those little bugs on the bench are just too fragile. Yeah, we see that power pad being used to get a boss back, and uh, not many ways to thin that deck down. As we see the forest seal stone going, so there's going to be a draw for two after a boss, draw for three after a boss here. Okay, so no disruption possible Goodness. this turn with the rock sands. So that means the Clara is in hand and will knock out anything that Lassie puts in play for that one prize. Oh, that's absolutely petrifying. And Lassie, I mean, they can't. They can't not see it coming. The Cramorant. Do they have anything that can rescue them? So that's a head on the Cramomatics. They're going to look now for something that can rescue them. But because they played that boss, they do not have access to a Roxanne, Roxanne to disrupt no. that Clara out of hand. So Oliver getting the Clara off the prizes has game in hand. Wow. And that that's the winning hand constructed there from the Clara off the prize cards. It's all they needed. The missing puzzle piece has been constructed. Uh, Lasse has no idea what's on the horizon, probably thinking that Oliver has one Clara. I guess a path here. There is paths in Lassa's deck, so if he puts a path in play, not seen many cards, so I don't know how likely that is. Um, if he got that off of the Kramomatic, maybe that would have been enough, but knocking out the only Retreater as well, so a Retreat out is also needed for Oliver. I assume he'll have one. He's got plenty of energy available too. Um, but yes, he is going to put oh, that path in play. So the path is down, so Drapion is no longer available. Uh, may need to manually attach to it through things like Mirage Gate. Um, and we'll see what attack is being copied here. Uh, there is um, the fusion energy on it to go for the Max Miracle, just yeah. straight off of the Mu Max, And so that Greninja doesn't go into the Lost Zone because there is a path to the peak in play. They're still going for the Clara. I think there might be a Pokestop in hand. So if there's a Pokestop in hand, the Clara plus Drapion will be enough. Uh, we'll also get the energy through that Clara, so we'll be able to retreat. Or maybe not. They look a bit hesitant. They look a little hesitant. They we'll did see. take Drapion more down. attackers than just Drapion. But is it there? No. Oh, my goodness. Lost oh, vacuum is available. Vacuum. Anything with the vacuum here is enough. Oh, that vacuum's got enough room for the, all that snow. It's impressive, really. Oh, he's going to try and search through the deck for a switch cart. <gasps> Um, could have manually attached her. Oh, oh he needs he needs the is. energy on the Drapion to because there's only three fusion yeah, Pokemon in play. <laughs> oh, they, these guys are smarter than us. What a, an amazing wow. game of Pokemon there! So much had to be thought through there. So many different routes that could have been taken, and in the end, that Drapion finishing off, taking only one prize off of knocking out that Mu V Max. But Oliver had to fight around discarding that Drapion with the Pokestop early on. Indeed, that was really scary. The fact they managed to overcome. What what seemed like a not great matchup in initially with the fusion strike build having those single prize attackers available they managed to overcome through thick and thin and we know that our friend shay really would have enjoyed that game i know they're watching backstage but they'd have enjoyed being here with us i imagine too yeah like a big fan of the fusion mu was playing it for as long as they could um but they've they've, they've left it behind they've got over to lugia so that i think that tells you how rough Fusion Mew is in the meta right now, because if, yeah. if Shea is giving up on Fusion Mew, it must be struggling. It must be. I mean, maybe maybe that's why our fantastic uh, winner's bracket is being constructed with these guys and not us this time. But we'll have to see. Maybe he'll bring it back one day and show us what for. Maybe after this, he'll net deck this <laughs> list and copy it in. But um, well played from both sides, but you can see where Fusion Mew really struggles. That whole game, Drapion did not come out until right at the end there, and it was still in favour of Lost Box. It was. Yeah, Very Lost tough. Box tried everything they could to disrupt, and the path they was hoping they were hoping is late enough in the game. I think this is going to stick. Hopefully, my opponents used all their resources. They haven't got stadiums or vacuums left over, but the turbo build does excel with those vacuums. There were so many different things there that the players had to think about. There was the fusion energy being used to naturally attack with the psychic leap on the um, the unevolved Mu V. There was the fusion energy used to use Max Miracle on the fully evolved Mu Max. Yeah. There was the fact that the, there was only three fusion Pokemon in play, so the Drapion didn't uh, needed an energy. So there was loads of these yeah, like clever little interactions. Overlooked, right? The, the Drapion's ability actually 
does need energy sometimes that that you need to have a certain amount of fusion strike pokemon in play for it to be active to it to be live whereas what they were trying to do is actually make sure that there weren't enough muse or genesect in yeah i mean when we see double turbo energy mew we typically fall into the mindset that that's the way to play Mew. And then yeah, Fusion Mew is such yeah. a different game. But we will, uh, I think judges is checking something, ch checking back some footage because there might have been something missed there. So we'll see how that all affects uh, the next game. But for now, I want us to have a look and see where uh, how everything's going here at the event um, because we're, we're, we're just one of many games here. Absolutely, um, so much going is, on. Oh my goodness, I wasn't expecting that. Look at that meta. And this, I think a lot of people realized that Mew V Max was not going to be the, the, the play here. Hang on a minute. That's my deck. I, ah, I said Mew Max no, is going to no, do no. well here. Look, I've got a Gudra Slither of the pie chart, thank you. Look yeah. at my little Slither of pies let's in see, there. Let's see, Lugia V-Star was six. Good work, Shay. Uh, us casters all chose a deck that we thought would be our pick for the, for the meta here. I was a big believer that Mew Max was being under-respected. Yeah, so it would do well here. and clearly you were on the money with 16 Mew Max making 31.37% of our day two, which is insane. You think about how long Mew's been around. You think about how many things have tried to counter Mew. How many things said, no, I've got it this time. Mew is going down. And our day two says, not our friends. These psychic types are still up here. But it's interesting to see more than half of our pie chart in total is psychic types right yeah exactly and, and even more if you start including things like the Confei and the Sableye as part of the lost engine so psychic a very strong type in the history of TCG continuing to be so here I was also thinking how some of these decks change our opinions on Pokemon like yeah. a good friend of mine is a, a huge fan of Lugia um, and I told him I was like oh if you come back and play TCG because you haven't played it in a while yeah. you'll have to play Lugia but just so you know people don't like Lugia anymore <laughs> Mew like is the least favorite legendary at the moment because it's so, so good. And I think Mew has started to do that. Mew is one of the cutest Pokemon in the, in the, in the, in the universe. And then Everyone loves Mew, but now any TCG player might have a different perspective on the cute little kitty cat. Same thing with Gardevoir, right? Gardevoir is a, a fan favorite, um, but here it's, it's a scary prospect. But yeah, Mew doing so, so well. I'm, I'm impressed. It's lovely when players get to play their favorite Pokemon, right? I have so many friends who love Gudra and the having it be able to be represented here is lovely. Octillery being one of the less represented Pokemon in the TCG recently. Look, we get to see him on our little chart today. It's always fun when players manage to sprinkle their favorite into a day two meta breakdown. We also have to do a little shout out for the Kyurem VMAX. How Absolutely. has that snuck in? Have you, have you seen the Kyurem VMAX Is that the third decks? energy one? I, I think it might be. I don't know. I haven't seen the list from day two, but I've seen a lot of people running these, which has been really, really fun. Yeah, well, we'll have a little look and see what the, the casters picked as their favorite decks for the meta here. There he, there he is. Look at that genius with the movie, Max. What a smart man. Oh, we'll just have to uh, just uh, breeze past that a little bit. Let's look at Ben's list. <laughs> I mean, poor little Ben came in with Snorlax block. And the funny thing is, he was like, oh, I, I would probably have played Maridon. Um, and that's not done well either. So Maraid on Snorlax oh, block. No, uh, ben so does love to have fun. Ben's choices. He likes to have a bit of fun in Pokemon. He's, he does. He's been there, he's done that, he's tried playing the top decks, and now he, he just has fun with the game. But He's won the T-shirt, now just wants to have a good time. Exactly. Um, I would have been interested to, to see the roots for the Mew v Maxes. You know, there's so many of those decks there. How many Drapions have they come up against? Because typically you think, oh, Drapion, I'm going to lose that. But mm. having spoken to some Mew v Max players and having experienced it myself, the main reason I went to Mew v Max was I played double Drapion in a deck and still lost. Oh, I was like, well, if, no. if two doesn't work... Nothing's going to work. Nothing's going to work. So Mew v Max judge pathing its way to, to, to day two. So uh, we'll see how, how that plans out and whether we'll see it in top eight a lot. We do indeed. And uh, yeah, Shay's Lugia V star that he submitted was very different to the ones we've seen today. I mean, just, just look at Shay. You know it's going to be spicy. <laughs> He wears a, a bright pink suit. It's, of course it's going to be spicy. Well, go on then. We'll have a little look at your Mew VMAX deck well, list since we're so uh, Mew-centric at the moment. Why don't we have a peek? Let me, have a, let me learn. Right. So uh, in terms of, of the, the almighty Pablo came in and showed us that Mew VMAX is amazing, <laughs> I think everyone looked at that list as a great skeleton and then from there, how to improve it. So I took that list and thought, how can I make it more consistent? Because I felt like it was inconsistent at times. So one boss for a Serena increases early outs. 
Uh, I thought Avery wasn't that effective um, into a lot of matchups. It was only effective in Mirror and sometimes Guardi. And in all those situations, I'd rather be judging. Um, so I didn't mind that too much. I tried four judge for a bit, but then had too many judges. So I went down to three, and then that's where Penny came in. Oh. Um, losing uh, with your Genesex being sprinkled on is so yeah. disheartening. So to have that Penny there, it also acts as an early game out to as a switch out if you have to, or um, to reset a Genesect for more draws. So it can be an early game out to stay consistent. Yeah, that um, might have helped last in our previous game, huh? Yeah, exactly. And, and you can see there the nest balls, two nest balls. I saw uh, Gabor having no nest balls yesterday. No, uh, I might be interested to switch those into trekking shoes now Ooh. because nest balls can be clunky at the end, especially with all those VIP pass. And outside of that, um, the double choice belt and cleansing gloves, uh, having insta playable damage modifiers means that you, you don't tend to clunk up your hands and it's always good to have access to those when you need them. Um, three path, could go four path, but like ultimately each Mew list is it's played in its own way. Everyone likes to hold their resources. Uh, and I think these kinds of um, skeletons are pretty good, but I would definitely net deck one of the better players who's going to end up finishing top eight over what I've put out here. I think... Uh, oh, I quite like the spicy cleansing gloves, though. Cleansing gloves is great for psychic leaping on, on Confei and, and uh, Curliers, but um, yeah, you can, you can see this list here. It's pretty standard. There's nothing too crazy here. Maybe the two choice belt one cleansing could be um, an unusual thing. Um, and then maybe the, the, the nest balls, I'm, I'm tempted to get rid of them. Yeah, I think maybe trying out a pair of uh, new shoes for Mew might be a good idea. See if you can thin that deck. The great thing about trekking shoes is no matter what, you're always ending up with fewer cards in your deck and fewer cards in your hand. So you're always going to take something playable at least so mm -hmm. that you can keep building up to that Fusion Strike system ability from Genesect, allowing you to draw cards for each Fusion Strike Pokemon you have in play. Exactly. I think Echoing Horn and Penny are probably the two cards which uh, could be switched for other Power Spike cards depending on the meta you're playing against. Mm. I play against a lot of Lost Box in my local, so Penny is useful there. Echoing Horn is great uh, if you don't have Lost City, because uh, yeah. then you can get back a Drapion at the end that you've knocked oh, out. Yeah, you don't play Lost City, so you're relying on the heavy parts of the peak against two Drapions, yeah? Yeah, so if they dra if they hit your Mew Max with a Drapion, you've Roxanne Path, uh, hope they can't get Clara that turn, and then next ah. turn, Echoing Horn that Drapion back and take another knockout on it. That's so it's, smart. Yeah. I like it. I like the 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 kind of swing and sway of that deck, of the way that you can bring things back and punish them. I can't tell, Amy, whether you're impressed uh, because it's a good deck or you're impressed because it's an all right deck and I made it and you're surprised that I could think up something so smart. <laughs> I I'm no. trying to read the, the, no. the, the excitement here from you, Amy. I, I, I know I don't seem like I know Pokemon, but I do. I promise. <laughs> Honestly, no. I think it's a good list. I appreciate a good spice card myself. I'm more of a power cards and a consistency cards gal myself. I like to take risks. I mean, being risky is where uh, maybe you're more of a Fusion Mew player. Maybe, oh, maybe. maybe if you were going to go down the Mew VMAX route, you'd go down the Fusion Mew list, because we are seeing um, in this match we've had today, uh, Fusion Mew has been looking spicy, but it can be a little bit clunky, so more power over consistency there. Uh, but we have seen so much Lost Engine. We know we looked at that meta share. Mew VMAX has been uh, a top deck there, but Lost Engine has been key for so many of the top decks in this current format, the most popular engine. Uh, and so we'll see what makes Lost Box so good. So there's very many, many different types of Lost Box, and I think a lot of people have moved cards in and out of Lost Box as it's gone on. It's had a really interesting meta journey where we now have kind of a split of variants, which is really fun, and you never quite know what you're coming up against. And I think that's the scary part. Having lack of deck knowledge for your opponent is one of Lost Box's greatest strengths. There's a Comfey and the Active. Does your opponent know what you're doing? Absolutely no, they don't. They still have to figure it out. That you still have to continue the game. They need to analyze your energy. They need to analyze what you're doing. Can you hide something from them until game two? There's so many angles that Lost Box can command a really strong presence just through the element of surprise. I think that's what makes Lost Box so good as a deck is people don't know what you're going to play. People have an inkling as they see cards revealed, uh, but some of them can identify as very similar decks. You know, if you see a lightning energy, um, you don't know whether it's Raikou and Dragonite or 
just Dragonite. If you yeah. see Water Energy, you know it's probably not a Sable Zard, but then what's with that Greninja uh, and so on and so on. So yeah. Lost Box doing very well here, uh, but it does have a lot of challenging decisions in it, which makes it tougher for these players to do. So anyone who's wondering what we're talking about right now, we are um, just waiting for the judge call from the table. They're looking back at some footage to make sure the right decision was made. Um, we're going to be getting back to that game shortly, but we are in round 13 here at Malmo Regional in Sweden. Uh, just a few more rounds left after that, and we'll be finishing out the Swiss stage uh, of this over 400 player regional. 52 making it to day two, where we got to see that meta shared just now. Um, it's been. It's been interesting. It's not gone how I expected it in terms of the decks we've been seeing. Not at all. That's why I was so surprised at that meta day two pie chart. I really wasn't expecting to see that much Mew, especially with the Lost Box running around, where we can see that usually it's kind of a mid matchup. It's 50-50. So I thought people wouldn't risk it as much and would maybe go for something which doesn't have as many 50-50 matchups. But Mew said, you know what? I don't care about your Drapion. I'm coming in here anyway, and I'm going to use all the Path to the Peaks. I'm going to use all the Lost Cities, and we're going to have a good time. I think that's the, the Mew way, is I don't care about what you could do. I care about can you do it? And that's where the judge keeps coming in and affecting them. But yeah, you can see here the Lost Box on screen uh, has a good matchup against Gardevoir and Maridon. Um, so Gardevoir, which is also doing quite well, has been popular with uh, some of the top, top players. We saw Tord playing it. We saw Kai Wainwright playing it. We saw both the Schultz playing it. Yeah. Um, so that Gardevoir EX might have been fought out a little bit by some of these Lost Box. But it has, we've seen through high quality gameplay of that Gardevoir that it can still beat Lost Box. Yeah, you well. see right here that it's supposedly a good matchup statistically. God of War's got the advantage, you know, the disadvantage, sorry. But actually, really clever use of uh, healing abilities from Cresselia. I remember very early on in the building of the God of War list, a lot of people were debating whether Articuno or Cresselia was better. The Articuno, you can go ahead and attach energy from your hand to it, to, in fact, when you put it on the bench. And then you can snipe for 120 damage anywhere on the board. So there was that debate, but I think it's very clear that using Cresselia to heal makes it so much better to use that instead in this meta. Well, we're going to take a little bit of a pause here because the judges are just making sure we get the right decision. Uh, you know, when we're on this big stage at this big moment, you know, this could be the difference between someone making a load of money, a load of CP, especially this is a top two table yes, right here huge. we've seen on stream. It's a really big moment. The stakes are high and I just want to make sure everything's serendipity. So we will give those judges the time they need to make that right decision. So for you guys, we'll give you a little bit of a chance to take a breather, get some fresh air and come back after this little break.